Just who's black in the house. Yes! <laughs> uh, I'm on the exchange and we are here at the finale! Girl. Oh my god, we're almost done! I'm so excited! I get to make my own, <laughs> I get to make my own schedule now, bitch! <laughs> She's the CEO of her own company. The girls need all these tight ass hoes, including us that got eliminated, but oh, here we are. Girl, the we're most happy. eliminated. <laughs> Listen, I didn't. I would have stayed for another episode, but once you were gone, I was like just eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here! Bam. Okay, this is what I want to ask you: Is your life any different after Drag Race, or are you just more tired? Is that the only difference? Well, that of course, very, very much that. But also, um, I think social media is like the biggest change. You know and I mean, just navigating that and the influx of people messaging you and DMing you and mm -hmm. wanting and just wanting to say, "Hey, girl, I know you may not see this, but." You know what I mean? It's all of those things. I mean, we work in New York City, so we've always been pretty busy. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, of course, now we're traveling the yeah. world, yeah. Uh, going to amazing places like Connecticut and stuff yeah. like that. Like, who would have thought? <laughs> but now it's like navigating social media, which is a tricky thing. Yeah. How about you? Uh, girl, okay. No, I, I feel the exact same way. It's just that you have to be like nine times as ready for backlash when not you are completely yourself all the time, which exactly. is me. And but it's like, but yeah, I think it's so true that when you are a New Yorker and you're a New York queen, you have to be sewing and making hair and doing stuff all day around the clock. Now my schedule is actually more relaxing because I'm on a plane like six hours a day, and that's downtime, which I've <laughs> right. never had before. I'm like, woo! I have like time enough during the day to like overdose and recover. Like, <laughs> I have so much time. Okay. You came out in this sponge dress in the very first episode, and Asia didn't like it because she has such good taste. I know right. it hurt your feelings. Um, but like, you turned it into an empire. There's a music video, there's merch. You probably get more Brillo pads and sponges than, any, than any housekeeper in this goddamn <laughs> nation. What, tell me about this. Story. How did this happen? I mean, we were in that workroom. You saw it. Like when the, when Rue came out and announced that challenge, he brought those cards in. Yeah. Like m where my mind went, I was like, okay, what do I see an abundance of yeah. that I will be able to craft something out of? You know what yeah. I mean? Because unlike you, someone who was petite and you could and cracker, you have a great eye for fashion. You like you Ooh. you like have patterns. You can like make to be creative. I was like, I need to be ridiculous yeah. and conceptual to yeah. make my mind work. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, I love my little poofs. My oh, little <laughs> she cannot be turned away from that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just made this concept about dirt, and I got the ping pong balls to be suds, and yeah. I just like made this sponge thing, and now it has taken over the world. How about you, though? I mean, Cracker, you had some of the greatest fashion in Drag Race history. Like, you turned out every a look every single week. Well, this is what I will say. This is what I will say. I think that I turned out the most me uh, concepts. Yeah. And I, I like fashion is something that I'm not interested in clearly. Otherwise, I wouldn't wear pink rhinestones on pink denim. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but like the, telling a story and doing cracker concepts, I think that's where I really showed myself and made drag history there. Not to the judges, but I think to the fans. Yeah. And I think it's the same thing with like your titties, old lady titties outfits. Like the judges may have been like, I don't know, but America was like, yes. Thank you. Yeah. We've been complaining about a lack of diversity on Drag Race, and yeah. here it is. Yeah. Thank goodness. Now, of course, there were 14 of us on the season. Huge fucking personalities. Right. Did anyone like surprise you in terms of person, like like personality wise? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> um, when Blair Sinclair walked in, I was like, I'm gonna snap this bitch. Yes. With like not even two hands, just one hand. Like, Agreed, girl. Like an egg, just like. <laughs> bitch, I'm gonna be like Thanos, girl in Avengers. <laughs> She's done. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like staples, boing. <laughs> that was easy, bitch. But no, she had so. She had more grits than a southern breakfast. <laughs> she was just such a powerful fucking woman. She's just fucking amazing. Yeah. I, I, so I complete 180 on her. Totally. For me, I would say it would be the Vixen. You know, even though she came in saying that she was ready to fight, her outfit for day one was like literally falling apart. I was like, oh, this bitch is either going home today. Yeah. Or maybe like, did you did you mean morning. when you said fight? You mean struggle, <laughs> right? Like all my life I had to fight. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then when she pulled that win week two, and I saw how she was like, she came in like, she, her words had fucking power. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. She like she 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 surprised the heck out of me then. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you know, this is what I challenge people when they talk about the vixen. They're like, I don't like it. You 
I'm like, okay, well, but go back to the things she said and find the lie. Exactly. You may not like the tone, yeah. but when she talks about politics or how media works or how optics works or what the bitch was doing in the workroom, yeah. you may not like the tone, but find the goddamn lie. And whenever she pointed around the room and was like, I know all of y'all said the exact same thing, the only thing we could reply with was, I'm like, where's my cocktail? Yeah. Also, Asia, the bitch walked in on day one in a leather fringe uh, uh, Tony Tamar Braxton look. I was like, what in the Crenshaw swap meet is going on here? And She's I was like, on. yeah, it just surprised me because when she walked in with that, I thought her outfits would get better from there. Right. It shocked me, they didn't. <laughs> it got worse every week. I know, the tweet you hated the tweet you heard. But America thinks she's being ironic, and that's what they're like, oh, she has such a great sense of humor. I'm like, no, she thinks this is good. <laughs> we all think she's joking, but she's telling the truth with these outfits, so, yeah. For me, like, one of the reasons that I was able to survive this season was because you were there. Hello. And at the end of a long day, I could just sit down next to you and just be like, I know this person, we've worked together, we trust each other to support each other. And like, how was it being with a New York sister like on the season? Cracker, like we have our show together every week. Like you know when I've had it, I know when you've had it. Like we right. literally, we are bridesmaids. We can communicate with just a look. You know, so it was. It, it really gave me a lot, of, a lot, a lot of solace. Like especially when we are Ooh, solace. When, that's a good word. Right. Yeah. I do not think that I would have recovered from that second lip sync if you were not there. Because yeah. I will never forget it. After that, we went into the, we went back into the workroom after the lip sync after the episode, and um, I was so down. I wasn't really even talking, and like the cameras off, everything was done, and you wrote this fucking like eight page biography with huge t text at the top. 10 things I know about Monet. And it was these like 10 paragraphs about things that, um, that you like and you know about me. And I was like, oh my God, this is saving me right now in this competition. If yeah. Cracker was not here, yeah. bitch, she was gonna be Cameron Michaels in the bottom three weeks in a row and I was gonna go home. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that literally saved me in the competition. And I never really told you how much that meant to me, Crack. So I love you so much. <laughs> Oh, they treated us so bad. <laughs> we're the only somebody to laugh at me. Oh, color purple, girl. It's so <laughs> <terrible>. <laughs> I can't do this. I'm white. <laughs>